This is Andy Paul of Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm the job by Mick Hennessy Jr. over Zoom. Mick, firstly, um, Happy New Year. Hope you had a good one and a good Christmas. Did you get up to much? Happy New Year, Andy, first and foremost. And, um, you know, uh, I you know, I had some uh, good downtime, recharged the batteries a little bit after a busy year of fighting. Um, it's nice to spend some time with family and relax the training a little bit. You know, I, I was still ticking over focusing on mainly a bit of strength strength training trying to build that a little bit but um yeah it was it was nice and relaxed thank you good to hear it mate um going on to well rather than going on to just going back over your last year your three fights three wins how would you look back on it all now me uh yeah no, it's a very good year i was very happy with it um got my first stoppage in there as well um unfortunately didn't get fight to fight december 10th i had that terrible flu that was going around um, you know, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, no, I, it's a very successful year and one I'm looking to to build on in 2022. I'll be having my first eight rounder um, in the first show of the year, which will hopefully be around March time. So, yeah, things are looking good. Before we we'll come on to that, you mentioned the answer before uh, this one that you've been working on on you know, some strength, extra strength work. Is that something you've you've thought about in terms of? trying to develop your, your man strength man strength effectively is something which I've heard other trainers use before um just about when you're going into your fights you feel like you possess that extra bit of power to potentially stop your opponents or am I looking too much into it? Say so, uh, man strength is something that just comes naturally with as you mature and you get a bit older but of course all the strength training additionally helps as well. So you know, I'm working on that side of it. I'm still 22. I've still got maturing to do. So the man's strength still coming through. You know, I'm starting to get a few whiskers now. So <laughs> hopefully it won't be too long. <laughs> Although they do blow off when I walk outside. Or if the air cons a bit strong, you know. Uh, Mick, you said you're planning to, to go into eight rounders now. Um, talk about the plans for you know this year in general. So moving into eight rounders uh, and beyond. Yeah, of course. So I'd like to have a couple eight rounders, and then towards the end of the year, potentially fight for my first title. That that would be my my goal. Uh, however, I've got a, a brilliant team around me. I let them decide each move, and um, I'll be guided by them. At the end of the day, I'm in no rush. I've literally just turned twenty two. Got plenty of time. So um, yeah, it's got got a long road ahead of us. So there's no need to to rush things. Do you have any interest in? revisiting the Jamie Stewart fight you have one loss on your record have you thought about it all me you know what I um I don't really believe I lost that fight to be honest with you I was um I felt I won it I was a 20, 20 year old kid when I had the fight a lot went wrong before that you know it was just coming off COVID and the night before I was unwell really unwell so you know I've sort of I've sort of come to terms with it. I'm not, I don't like look back at it and I don't, it doesn't bother me. However, of course, as a fighter, of course, I'd love to avenge it. So yeah, it's a, it's one of them ones. I am. Um, yeah, I'd love to, but we'll see what, what we'll see. We'll see what my team has in store for me. Um, Mick, something which I've never had a chance to speak to you about previously is uh, your work with obviously your trainer, Junior Sabre. Now, Junior, a very interesting background in boxing was once highly touted as a, a potential star of the sport, but unfortunately was not able to go on to fulfill that due to um, medical reasons. Um, talk to me about working with Junior and what, what he's like as a trainer compared to the stories we heard of what he could have been as a fighter. So Junior, yeah. So, sorry, could you repeat that, Andy? Sorry. So just, just your work with Junior Sabre, um, you know, somebody who we know was once touted as a potential star of professional boxing, but was unable to even begin his professional career, you know, due to health reasons. Um, I just wanted to kind of get a better understanding of what it's like for you to work with him and how maybe his coaching methods are able to rub off, give him a past experiences he was expected to have going into the, the pro ranks if he had the opportunity 
So, yeah, working with Junior has it's been brilliant. You know, he was an extremely talented fighter and an extremely clever fighter for his age. You know, he's got, um, he studies the game. He's got a hell of a lot of experience. He's been doing it since he was nine years old, I believe. So for a young trainer, he's, he's very experienced and he, he knows a hell of a lot. I've learned a lot under him, quite a lot of little tricks. Um, obviously, you see all the pad work, the Mayweather pad work and stuff. He's got my reactions on point. And um, yeah, no, it's hard work. <laughs> he's a real, real dedicated trainer and he, he's on me, you know, and we work extremely hard in the gym and he's really helped me come on. And um, yeah, nice. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege to have him in my corner. Um, him and my dad, they're a, they're a brilliant combination. My dad still overlooks our training and offers his little pearls of wisdom as well. So it's a it's a lethal combination. And um, with their their backing, I can only you know there's, there's I can only achieve good things. Do you see from your work with Junior Mick as to why he was once so highly touted? I see um, how he has me training, and I see how dedicated he is to the coaching side. And I can see why he was so good. You know, he's, he's extremely dedicated. And, you know, when he puts his mind to something, he gives it a thousand percent, nothing less. So it's, it's easy to see why he was as good as he was when he was a fighter. Do you feel like you ever get a bit of that old kind of, you know, what Roger Mayweathers would have been training him and been teaching him coming up in his own work towards you? Yeah, of course, he's picked up a hell of a lot from um, going out to Vegas and training out there, seeing how, like, seeing Mayweather train with his own eyes and working with all those guys out there. And um, yeah, it's, it's you know it's extremely beneficial to me, you know, picking up that knowledge as well without having to go to Vegas. <laughs> Although I would love to at some point. I was going to say, Mick, I'm sure you wouldn't complain at that. No, I would. I'd love a little trip to Vegas. Who knows? I could be on the card soon when all this COVID madness eases down a bit. You know. Um, just one final thing on yourself. Obviously, you mentioned uh, getting out around March time. I've, I've spoke to a few guys um, about that who potentially be on the show. Do you expect to have an announcement soon? Uh, I'm expecting to have an announcement soon. Yeah, I'm. I'm waiting. I'm staying ready anyway. But. Yeah, there, there should be an announcement scene. I won't let too much out the bag yet, but some big things going on in the background. And then, Mick, just before I let you go, there's two fights which are coming up. I want to get your thoughts on. Uh, firstly, Amir Khan and Cal Brook. What are your thoughts? I think it's a, it's a great fight. They look, they both look like they've taken, it, as you'd expect, this fight extremely seriously. You know, even though they're both past their primes a little bit and stuff, and it's probably not the fight it once was, but, you know, Khan going out to train with Bonewack and Terence Crawford and you see uh Kelbrook out in Huge Frontier. They're both they're both preparing diligently for it. It's a real grudge match. So it's a hard one to call. It, it is a real 50-50. Um I maybe go I'll go Khan on points. And then the final one is Chris Eubank Jr. and Liam Williams on Feb 5th. Again, what is your take? Again, brilliant fight, <laughs> Liam Williams and Eubank Jr. Um, oh, God, we've got a good February coming up, haven't we? <laughs> oh, um, you know, I've heard, uh, I was down in Brighton the other day, I've heard Chris Eubank Jr. is looking brilliant in the gym. Um, I'll, go, I'll go with Eubank Jr. But it's a great fight, a close fight. Right, Mick, just before I let you go, the final word to yourself, is there anything you would like to say to obviously you know, any fans, followers, supporters of yours um, heading into the rest of this year? Yeah, and no, I just want to say thank you to everyone supporting me. Everyone always coming to support me at my fights and stuff. And even if they're cheering from home, I appreciate it. It means the world. Thank you to all my sponsors. You know, they make my journey a lot easier and they're a massive help. Um, Everlast. Better Body Gym, Seven Oaks and Blackheath, Raw Sport, Cryo Juvenate, Vite. I believe, yeah, thank you guys. Right, Mick, it's been a pleasure to catch up for the first time this year. It will not be the last. Hopefully, I'll see you in person soon at some point in yeah. the near future. Um, thank you for speaking to me and Boxing Social. Nice one, Andy. Take care. <laughs>